Today we have an incredible opportunity to worship God and to meditate on his mystery today. Today is, of course, the Sunday after Pentecost that the church designates as Trinity Sunday, the Sunday in which we honor the most blessed Trinity, the God that we know, love, and serve, one God in three persons. And it's beautiful because the church wants us to pause today after the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Pente Pentecost we celebrated last Sunday. Today, the church pauses to think about the Holy Trinity, for us to talk about God in his essence. And it is a mystery. But the problem with the word mystery makes us think that this is some sort of puzzle to figure out. Maybe think about, well, it's something that you just have to believe without any explanation. Just take it for granted. The church says, no, you must investigate this. One God in three persons, the blessed Trinity, the God whom you serve. Today we pause to look at him and talk about him and worship him in his essence. Not the things that he's done, like the sending of the Holy Spirit, of course, the Holy Spirit being God, but we celebrate the sending of that, that we got to receive that. The next Sunday we receive uh, the beautiful gift of the Holy Eucharist, Corpus Christi, right, where we celebrate Jesus, truly present on the altar in the Most Holy Eucharist. And then the next Friday, we celebrate his Sacred Heart. So these kind of beautiful feast days that have led after Easter, leading us into ordinary time, give us a chance to pause. Pause and think. Lord, do I know you? Because today, the Holy Gospel, the last words of Jesus the final words in Matthew's gospel, behold, I will be with you until the end of the age. Let that sink in. Behold, I will be with you until the end of the age. That means that Jesus will not abandon us. That this mystery, God himself, will not abandon us. No matter how dark it is out there, no matter how many storms afflict us, both naturally and spiritually, God will be with us, he promised. And if he is God, we can bank on that. More than you can bank on Google stocks or Facebook and Meta and Instagram and your feed drowning you for hours on end with videos and photos of cats and dogs and frogs and iguanas, you can bank on God that he will be with us until the end of the age. Now, how do we know this? Again, it's a mystery. So we have to recognize, we have to take a step back and say, wait a second, how do we know things? We're going to go epistemology here. How do you know things? Well, you've been given an intellect. And, an, and a will. You've been given a brain. You've been given the ability to think and the ability to choose your will. Got also uh, emphasized is your passions, which is the third, obviously, uh, uh, portion of, uh, of, of man as, uh, uh, as who we are. But our intellect and will allow us to engage in reality. So that means that I get to know things I get to understand things by didactic reason, right? I see two plus two equals four. I see that basketball is a game where you try and put a ball, a rubber ball, into a hoop. I can learn all about basketball. I can learn all about arithmetic. I can learn all about biology. I can learn all about these different things that God has created in the universe. I can continue to progress. I know things. Because my mind does not need to be illumined in order to reason things out. Obviously, we have that kind of colloquial um, joke saying that common sense isn't so common anymore. But your common sense, your ability to reason is a God-given ability. And that's the beautiful thing, is that revelation and grace are not necessary for those more created things, right? But what happens when we 
encounter a mystery, something that needs to be revealed. Not just about basketball. I can't tell you the tactics and the great things that John Wooden did at UCLA to win so many championships. I know that. I can see that. He plays basketball or coaches basketball well. I don't need revelation and grace to tell me that. But when we encounter a mystery, a mystery so great that we look at God, we meditate and contemplate on God himself, we need him to reveal this to us. So God has given us an intellect and will to engage with reality and gain a pretty good knowledge of these created things. But when we encounter a mystery as the church teaches us, we need faith. We need God to supply. He needs to reveal it to us, especially when it comes to himself. And so this is what we celebrate today, is that by faith, we are given access to higher truths, higher realities, in a sense. So faith is like a super strengthening. It is something that allows me to see things from a supernatural point of view. And it gives me access to God himself. This is why Jesus came. This is why the second person of the most blessed Trinity became man and saved us. So that we would have access to our Father in heaven. That we would receive the Holy Spirit as we did last Sunday. Or we celebrated last Sunday. We received it at your baptism, of course. But the idea is that we are able to receive, have divine life in us. This is why our second reading, of course, tells us, For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. The four-letter word, the bad F word, fear. Don't fall back into that but you have received a spirit of adoption. You are now grafted onto the family of God through whom by the spirit, we cry out, Abba, Father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. So that means that the Holy Spirit is in us that makes us cry out, Abba, Father, and that we are children of God. And if children, then we're heirs. Not because of what we've done, not because of your degrees, not because of your bank account, not because of your investments in Google, but you are heirs because of what Christ has done. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. See, this is the mystery of the most blessed Trinity is that they did not want, he did not want to be alone. God is sufficient. God is essence. God is. I am who am. He revealed it to Moses, right? But he chose us. You just sang, blessed are we because we are the people that God has chosen to be his own. This is a beautiful mystery that God loves you for eternity. That he will be with you on your journey of faith here. When things don't always make sense, you can turn to the mystery of God and say, God, I know who you are. And thus, I am hopeful. I can love. Because God is love. That's what we learn. By God revealing himself to us as love. God so loved the world, you know that. But he revealed himself in his essence, love. God is love. St. Augustine called the Trinity the lover, the loved, and the love between them. What a beautiful gift. There's no lack of love in God's essence, that he always loves you. But this is a mystery because we live in America. And I saw this uh, beautiful documentary about, you know, different families and families in the, in the third world countries. Do you know what they don't have? And you'd say money, right? Electricity. Okay, yeah, great. But you know what they don't have? They don't have timeouts. Americans have timeouts. When your kids drive you crazy, what do you do? Put them in a corner. Put them on a chair. Go up to your room until I'm ready to talk to you. Go up to your room and be by yourself. Do you know what third world countries do, specifically Ethiopia? 
when the kid messes up, the kid is now attached to mom's hip. You're going to do everything that I do. You're going to stand here as I fold the clothes, as I wash the clothes, as I cook dinner, as I go to the market, as I go out and do things. You're right next to me. Because you messed up, you're going to come closer to me. I saw that and I was like, that's what's missing. Our understanding is that when you sin, when I sin, God says, go in time out. Get away from me. Go up to your room until I'm ready to talk to you. Huh? What? That's not the God that we serve. That's not the God I believe in. I hope it's not the God you believe in. Because I don't want to be away from God. That's the worst. Especially for eternity. My goodness. Another four-letter word, hell. But what God does is say, I'm coming to you. When you fall away, I'm searching for you. Francis Thompson has that beautiful poem, The Hound of Heaven, right? God seeks us out, almost like a bloodhound. He wants to find us. He wants to bring us back. The prodigal son comes halfway, and God the Father runs to him. Doesn't wait for him to show up and say, oh, are you done crying now? He runs to him. Runs to him and embraces him. Shows him who God is. Love. And of course, as St. John Paul II, and you've heard it from this pulpit multiple times, what is love's second name? Mercy. Mercy. Because when misery is present, love goes to that misery and pours itself forth for that misery. We call that mercy. Misericordia. A heart moved at the sight of misery. When we mess up, when we sin, when we fall short of the glory of God, God says, come closer. You're not ugly. Come here. I want you to be with me. I want you to come back to me. I want you back in the family. So he sends our representative, his representative, into the box so that then you can confess how you've fallen short of the glory of God and you can be flooded with God's mercy that the divine life of the Blessed Trinity is back. Sanctifying grace is present. This is the mystery of our faith and why the Catechism says today, the Holy Trinity is the central mystery of our faith. The central mystery of our faith is the promise that God will not abandon us, that he is love. He is who he says he is and who he has revealed himself to us. What a beautiful gift this day is. And so those who encounter Christ, those who encounter Christ in the beautiful revelation of the good news of the gospel, they know this love. They know this love, and as St. John said in his first epistle, we can cry out with him that we have come to know and to believe in the love God has for us that God is love. So those who encounter Christ and enter a relationship with God himself welcome this communion of the Trinity in our hearts, in our lives. And we cry out, Abba, Father. We cry out from the depths of our spirit that we know who God is and we have seen what he has done for us and we desire to be united to him today in Holy Communion. May God bless you on this beautiful feast day of the Blessed Trinity and through our Blessed Mother's intercession, who was the great cooperator with the Blessed Trinity in bringing us salvation in a beautiful way, saying yes to God's plan in her life. May she always advocate for you that we will always sing the praises of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.